Hey there. Can you hear me okay? Oh uh, yeah, it's all it's all good. Thank you. Um, you hear me too? Yes. Yes, we're both Okay. early. <laughs> yes, uh, I was just having another interview. Um, and so I'm glad that you're already here because, um, right now I'm at my parents' place. Uh, it's my mom's birthday today, so I just um hopped in on this interview. I'm really happy to uh, be able to do the interview today with you. So um, so we're really excited to do it. But it it might it might be possible that my uh, nieces and nephews just jump in the room like um my little niece just went inside the room and said the hot dog's ready. <laughs> Oh, that's so yeah, sweet. it was yeah it was so cute. <laughs> Oh, oh, well, that's nice that you get to spend it with her too and get to be there with the family. Yeah, it is. Yeah, busy, busy day then. Yeah, it is. It is. Right. Yeah, well, I won't take a whole lot of your time then so you can get back to your family. Oh, oh no. Just 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 go ahead. Um really, I'm really thankful to um have the interview with you. Um appreciate all the all the interest in the uh, rising insane wildfire. So, um just let's let's take our time. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Um, awesome. Well, the album comes out Friday, um, Yeah, but you've right. released about half of it so far with singles. Um, how has the response been so far on your end? I I see it on my end, but. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's quite good i mean um, we were taking some time out it's been three years since we have been released uh, the, the last album so um we are glad to be back we are glad that the people are still um with rising insane um that's an awesome feeling to know that people were waiting on the record on new songs Yeah. Yeah. And this album in particular is super, super diverse. So you have like some kind of like new wave synth stuff in there. And then you have the piano song and then you have the heavy song and you just kind of have Yes. everything in between. Um, just out of curiosity, because there's so much diversity into it, um, which which vocal style do you prefer to do and um, which Because you have like pop rock songs in there too. So which genre do you feel the most like at home and comfortable with? Yeah, so first things first, yeah, the the album is has a lot of diversity and we were always think about oh, can we do this can we have this track like monster but then also have a track like wildfires and then add a track like the door <laughs> so um yeah but in the end we were quite um quite happy with with all the tracks we did and, and we love the diversity so um and when it comes to the style of singing um well i think of course it's it's um fun to do the easy stuff like easy um just just not not that easy but easier to sing stuff like a monster for example because it's it does not go so that much that high in range and it's rather um lower end song um of course it's, it's fun to sing stuff like that and to, to play around when you sing the song live you can go all the way up all the way down and you have more freedom in your range you know But uh, what I love most is the style of singing in Carousel and Wildfires because I'm a huge fan of Architects, huge fan of Sam Carter, and I always wanted to be able to sing and scream in the style of Sam Carter. And I'm quite proud of myself that I finally, uh, I'm, I'm finally able to get the sound like he does. And so it, it's it's the most difficult for me, but also the most fun because when you when you get the best out of you, it's the um it's the most fun you can have, I guess. So moving forward, do you know if that's something you guys are going to implement more into the music now that you're that now that you're learning that you can do it? <laughs> <laughs> so um I, I was learning it when we even before we started to write on wildfires i was doing them uh, it's uh first some drag me under and then all and then also had some um i leaned into it also on half alive and then we decided to take a step back from the style of um singing and shouting and wrote songs like rain malicious and well, well i think i do it too in malicious but anyways um I think that that's what it keeps it in. It's, it's keeping it interesting, right? I mean, we have some of these these vibey songs with um, quite easy vocals, but then also have these heavy songs like wildfires. And I think um, from this point, we um, are able to surprise the listener. To he never know or she never knows what's coming right uh, next. So um, I think we like to play with that. 
Yes. Yeah. And I appreciate that. I love albums that do that because it does. It keeps you interested the whole way through. And I know that people don't necessarily take the time to listen to whole albums anymore. Maybe a little bit more since vinyl's been back, but um, but I think it's important because it is a journey and it's and it's cool when um it keeps you interested, you know. Yeah. I think bands like Big with the Horizon and also right now I think Falling in Reverse have dropped their album like after four years of writing singles. Um, they they are doing it the exact exact same way. I mean, Bring Me the Rise is the best example of uh, having pop tracks, metal tracks, screamo tracks, and then oh, even some techno stuff like Nihilus Blues. Um, on they could put it on one album and nobody would be complaining about it. That's just I mean, it's it's kind of a magical thing, and you can do it in this metal scene. It's so so fascinating, I guess. And also falling in reverse, um, you can you can think of what it up to what you want. But they are having they they are having really um heavy rapping and in their in their songs and then they were doing this country rock metal song and you were you were getting surprised by them and I think that's what that that was makes you listen to a whole album like you never know what's coming and you can be surprised by a song I think that's that's a good way to write an album. Yeah. Yep. I agree. I agree. I'm a big Mr. Bungle fan. And so anything that that surprises me is is definitely a, a top from like top in my book. Um, So let's talk about The Door. You have such a raw, beautiful voice in that song and you hit so many different, oh, so many different um levels there. Is that first of all, is that song difficult for you to do because it's such a raw um aggressive sound in a in a melodic and beautiful way not aggressive obviously like harsh but um is that one a difficult one to do vocally yes uh, it's, it's not it's not quite easy <laughs> at least yeah i mean i was that, that, that song lived in my head rent free for over ten, over two years i mm -hmm. started writing that song on, on my piano we, we were just moving into a new house and there was nothing done we had no kitchen we just had uh, water but there was a piano staying, standing uh, in the living room. Um, and I was just playing that E note. Bing, bing, all the way through. And then from, from there on, the song developed in my head first. And I started singing to that song like two years ago. Always. Da, 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 da. Every time. So I kind of got used to this uh, melody. And the more you sing, the better you can do it. So um, it is hard to sing especially in the bridge where i go on this um raw shouty vocals um that's definitely definitely technically difficult to do but it's it's so much fun it's a beautiful song now tell me about the lyrics because you have a lot of important lyrics throughout this album so tell me about the lyrics in that one thank you um well the door is um the most personal song on the album so kind of glad that you mentioned it um it's about myself um, dealing with past dramas, dealing with my anxiety, my depression, um, had a long way to go. And I almost feel like I get over this and I can let that be in the past and look forward and yeah, just, just move on. But I always feel like when I'm close to the point of, um, letting, yeah, letting, of letting go, um, I feel like I am standing in front of a door and I don't know how to open it. So that's the song that, uh, that's what the song is all about. In one line, it says, I'm laying down beside this door that's always locked. Am I just waiting for the moment in time to overcome? So that's basically it. Wow. Oh, that's a, a very relatable song, I'm sure, for a lot of people. Um, is that one you're going to do live? And do you, like, I, I know that writing and, and creating with personal stuff can be very therapeutic, but also if it is something that you're going to put on your, um, you know, playlist moving forward or set list, playlist, set list, same thing, whatever. <laughs> um, is that something that you feel like might be difficult at times to do live because of the emotional impact of it? Uh, yeah, it, it definitely is. Um, we are we were, we are thinking about if we do it live, but you know when you, when we are having a live show, we try to um, deliver the most energetic performance that we can. And then we are about to deliver. So um, and we also have another um, rather soft song on the album, which is uh, Lighthouse. So we have to decide whether to play live Lighthouse or the Door. 
And um, chances are that we, we, are, we are playing Lighthouse because it is a single. single. People know that song. And also it has quite relatable lyrics. So, um, yeah. yeah. But, well, we will, we will see where the journey takes us, right? If you come to Idaho, I'm going to request the door. <laughs> but uh, but Lighthouse, <laughs> Lighthouse is a really beautiful song, too. Um, definitely. Um, but I But the door just, yeah, is it hits me a lot. Yeah. Um, so let's go to the opposite side of the spectrum, Wildfires, which is the heaviest one on the album. Um, tell me a little bit about that one. Right. Wildfires was one of the last songs that we completed for the album. And um, kind of, I, I wanted to summarize um, the lyrics in one song. That's also why the, the album um, got the title Wildfires and why Wildfires is the title of the album because I wrote so much all you know about mental health as well I will always I will, I will never stop to write about mental health because it's a big part of me but I was also writing a lot about um oh you know oh, it's it's so much about about hate in general about homophobia about racism about all the things that are um, raging all over the world right now. So um, these songs, all the songs in Wildfires, um, they're about one of these things that I just mentioned. And so Wildfires is as the last track of the album and the title track. It summarizes all this. Um, and wherever you look, you look to the left, you look to the right, you scroll through the comment section of on it doesn't matter which which kind of pose it is. Just scroll down the comments, and somebody is trying to spread hate. Somebody is just behaving like a little, you know. And I I felt kind of sick of all the hate, so I decided, um, or I had this this imagination that wherever you look on the world, there are some fires burning. Wherever you look, if it's the internet, social media, if it's news. If it's your surroundings where where people complain about whatever, and so I decided to write a song about that. That everywhere you look, there's a fire burning. So I, we call this track on the album "Wildfires." I love that. I love that. I think it's such an important message because it is so true. And I think sometimes people don't necessarily recognize how much of an impact that has on not only just other people, but just like us as a, as a whole, as a unit, you know? And so I think it's a really important thing to, to bring to attention. Now, because you talk about mental health a lot, um, do you have fans that approach you about their mental health stuff and how their, how your music has helped them through, through their stuff? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that's what keeps me, um, writing mental health stuff if it's not for myself then it's for them because people are reaching out when we are when we are meeting up after a show uh, maybe on the merch table maybe outside of the venue um they come to me and they are thankful they are saying thank you for writing that song i love that particular song because i can relate to that song because and it helps me creating new music it helps me to be a better person and i think that's a way it's something that i will that I um, can be happy about for the rest of my life to be helpful to other people. And for example, um, Rain is one of these songs that rose up from a story I heard from somebody came to me after a show. Um, he was pouring his heart out onto me, telling me um, that he noticed that uh, he's gay when he was like 11 or 12 years old, and he kept it as a secret. He um, hide his real personality in front of his parents, in front of his friends, and that made him sick, that made it, that made him depressive. And he was living inside a prison of the, of the self. And so I decided to write about that story. And Rain is a song for everybody to um, cheer them up, to live your best life, to be yourself, and to get out of your cage and show who you really are. Reveal yourself. I love that. Does he, do you know if, I mean, do you, do you keep in contact with him? Does he know that that song's about him? Uh, I hope the person um, knows that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, now I, we we are not in contact. But um, okay. I think it's it's quite okay that you keep you know keep things for yourself. Of course, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I love I love that. So this is so interesting that we're talking about this. I just talked to uh, Tim Montana Montana last night, and we 
we're talking about the same kind of kind of topics of mental health. You know, you guys both um, sing about sing about that. Um, now, when people approach you about like really traumatic stuff that they've experienced, and it's either something that's relatable for you or it's just like really traumatic to hear because there's something you know I, I'm actually a mental health therapist outside of this and so there is a secondary trauma of listening to other people's trauma that sometimes is hard for us to shake off have you ever had that experience of where someone shared something with you of where you're like oh boy that's gonna be I'm gonna carry that with me I mean obviously uh, you did with, with that gentleman yes it's, yeah uh, well of course there are stories that you think about um, I mean you know like like it's like I said about when I was talking about how the the album got the title Wildfires, it's the same like when you watch um the the news and you see other people's um well somebody lost a friend somebody lost their children somebody lost their 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 um loved ones and I think I think it all affects us human and when you are um talking to a person whether you know him or them or or not. And you hear the story. I think it affects us all, if we want it or not. So yeah, of course, of course, that's uh, that's the thing. Yes. Yeah, you have a very beautiful heart. Now, I don't think it does affect everybody <laughs> like it does um, some people. Um, but you have a very yeah beautiful heart and soft soul, and I think that's so important in this world. So important in this world. I mean, if more people were able to to view things and feel things that way, I think that we'd be in a lot better shape. <laughs> now, something I ask everybody that I think is so important, self-care. What are some things that you do to help keep yourself balanced, to help keep yourself, um, you know, with, especially with mental health, like stabilized things you do for yourself? Uh, I cuddle with my dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, well, um, writing music is probably one of the biggest things I do. Um and working out like go for a for um for a run or you know just do some push ups or lift some weights and i I sometimes I try to meditate, but that's that's definitely a thing that I need to do more, but you know it's you have to take the time, but more important than taking time is to be ready to it to yeah ready to meditate because I think it's for me it's not that easy because you know you're deep diving into yourself um that's sometimes that's a that's a harsh place to be um but it's um i think whenever i i meditate for myself um i realize how important and how how good it is but it's always you have to overcome a certain point to do it so that's probably a thing um that i would tell people to do when they are asking me on how to be more balanced Yes. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I need to do it more. I, I talk about it all day, every day. And I'm like one of the worst at doing it lately. And I know how, how I mean, two minutes even is it's that you don't even yes. have to do it for that long. <laughs> but it's like, I don't you, have time for that. You, you can just sit down, close your eyes, take some deep breaths and think about things. But you, there's, I don't know what it, what it, what holds me back. But I just feel like, no, nah, not right now. I think we all know the answer, but <laughs> it's, it's well, I, thing. I think you probably hit the nail on the head, like giving yourself that like time in that moment to really just like think and be or not think and be can be a little intimidating. It's a little, it's a little bit of a scary thing. It's a vulnerable feeling, you know? Yeah, exactly. What about some things that you do just for fun? Oh, that's cool. Uh, the music. Cuddle with my dog. You know? <laughs> For example, well, my wife and me, we just um, became parents last year. So there ain't much space for things oh, for just having to do for, for oh, fun, yeah, you know? Oh, yeah, you're busy, busy. So. Yes, <laughs> that's it. That's wonderful. Um, It's dog, kids, or kid. Uh, Yeah, busy, yes. busy life. Um. Do you know, I guess you probably don't know at this point, or maybe you can't tell me, if you guys are going to have an opportunity anytime soon to be able to travel over to the States? Well, I don't know at the moment. <laughs> and um, we are, as, as I said, um, we were, it was quite calm the last three years because we didn't release any albums and um, barely released um, 
other songs um, except the Demons EP. And so we were not um, on tour that much in the last three years. We were this year. So I think and I hope that this year is going to set up um, the next steps. It's going to set up the new tours. And yeah, so um, we, we are just curious and excited on, on um, yeah, on the way that we that we have paved for uh, this year. Yeah, yeah, right. The album's not even out yet. I'm like jumping way ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, back to lyrics real quick. I now since you um now my dogs are barking. Um, since <laughs> you write about personal things, it's probably a little bit easier to like obviously find the inspiration because it's from within. But are there ever times of where you struggle with uh writing a a song lyrically? Yeah. Um especially for for wildfires i mean um you have to get into this um state of mind to write lyrics um and i was it was a, it was pretty difficult this time because i told myself not to write about my mental health because i don't want to do it all the time just to be to be this mental health singer because you know it can help people to overcome uh, certain traumas and, and stuff but it also when you when you all always write about sad things about depression, then it may be depressing to listen to Rising Insane, right? So I wanted to um, get a little more distance from, from it. So I thought, on yeah, what can I write about? Um, so I tried to write about good things, like I did in Monster, like just just forget about all the hate. Um, forget about what other people might think of you. Just be yourself and have fun with you, your friends and yourself. Um, just enjoy life. So that's that's kind of the thing. Um, yeah, but it was difficult to get in the groove because writing about good times, about having fun, it gets cheesy, very, very cheesy, very, very fast. <laughs> so, true. so true. Oh my gosh, it's funny. Oh, yeah. So how, like, what, it, or if anything, did you use anything for inspiration to try to kind of tap into how that could look without it being cheesy? Because you definitely don't, don't cross over into that cheesy line at all. Oh, thank you. <laughs> glad, you, glad you say that. Um, well, for, for example, um, Monster, let's, let's keep it with that song. Um, when I had the idea for the lyrics, I was just driving with my car. I was just driving around, um, having the instrumental. Um, I was listening to it all the time, the loop. And I was trying to get in the groove and feel like what kind of words, what kind of rhymes could get me in this mood of just driving around with my car and just feeling the moment. That was the inspiration that I had. I try to um, read through lyrics of 70s, 80s, 90s bands on, because they were singing about fun times quite a lot, <laughs> but they were not so fitting for this generation. <laughs> right, right. Um, <laughs> Maybe not so, so much I, 90s. Uh, 90s was kind of depressing music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So I, I, I just thought, no, I'm not going to use that as an inspiration. So I just stick to my imagination on how having a good time for monster yeah no that i think that's great and i think you can still use mental health in a positive way of like yeah being like uplifting but still using kind of that that medium which is basically you know what you've done that's funny driving around in your yeah. car that's a good way of doing it like any nature always <laughs> pulls, that, pulls that stuff out but yeah 80s is the definition of <laughs> cheesy like <laughs> it's fun it's fun I, I don't not like 80s music but when you said that I'm like oh my gosh I can already, like already like say the bands even <laughs> oh awesome well thank you so much for for um taking time out of your day especially on on such an important and big day um for me it's a pleasure I hope that you um enjoy the rest of your day and congrats on the upcoming release thank you thank you so have a nice day too and hope to see you again. Bye-bye. Yes, absolutely. Bye-bye.